Was it hard? Is it hard to get a listing? The game changer for me, the moment that I got to the point where I stopped worrying about whether I got a deal or not. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Ricky Caroo! He is an investor, a speaker, and soon to be remembered, in my opinion, as a legend in the industry. The cool thing about what he was doing was he was documenting everything. Like he would post his calls, his work he was putting in, the strategies, he was sharing everything. But I took it as a challenge to see just how fast you could go from nothing to really get up and doing good stuff. If you don't believe me that that's what my intentions are, then that's laughable. But for me, it's about building the relationship because the better we get at building the relationship, the less objections we're gonna get. The number one reason people choose agents is because they had a friend in the business that they felt they were buddies with. It's crazy how the mind works. And honestly, your mind is could be lying to you. And, yeah. and the reality could be the complete opposite. What's up, Shane Noblin? What's up, dude? What's happening, Ricky Caruth? How you doing, brother? Good, man. So how many listings have you picked up in like the last couple months? Uh, so, so I picked up one to, well, one this week. Uh, last week I picked up two. Last couple months I've picked up 17. I started 17 listings. Oh yeah, dude. Um, October one, when, um, when that 30 listing challenge started, I went, I went hard. I went hard on it and I picked up, um, seven, 18, 18 with my listing appointment today. I got to come list me today that I'm doing as long as it goes, like I expect it's going to go. That'll be number 18 or shooting these, for 30, but I didn't hit it. Are all these, um, what, like, what are these? Like what? So these are all expireds and Fizbo's. Now I've went really hard this year on Fizbo's really uh, honed my craft, uh, with that so far this year, I've picked up over 40, uh, Fizbo's just, just going hard on them. I've got a whole process though, from, uh, mapping out exactly what the initial conversation sounds like. And I don't even like calling it a script. Everybody else wants to call it a script. For me, it's a conversation with five non-negotiable sentences that drop in it. And as long as you just get into a fun conversation with someone and drop those sentences in where it makes sense, the calls, almost every call goes just the same. And I'm having a lot of success teaching other agents to do the same thing. And you've got a YouTube channel. I'm going to link that below so people can watch you make live cold calls, right? I do. I do. I've got a lot of my videos on there. I've also got some of my coaching videos on there where I have agents come in and I teach them how to do it. Hell, just um, Tuesday this week, I had an agent come in out of Georgia. She's four years as an agent, never made cold calls in her life. Got her on the phones. Uh, well, I got her in Tuesday to go through the process. And then yesterday I got her on the phones for the first time making cold calls to Fizbo's. Her very first two calls, she set two listing appointments for today. She's at those listings right now. So 18 listings in the last couple months. But mm -hmm. it, for sell owners expired, I guess the question is, was it hard? Is it hard to get a listing? It's really not. And the funny thing is, is I kind of got myself backed into a corner last year. So last year I was doing a lot of circle prospecting. I had a lot of momentum in the industry um, back last. So we're talking 22, uh, the spring of 22. I eased up on my prospecting because we wanted to do a big addition on my house. Mm -hmm. I'm a former contractor, so I hate to hand off that responsibility to anybody else. I like to do a lot of my own work. Um, I stopped prospecting, but I had a lot of momentum going. So I was still closing deals and had things happening. Problem is I hit around October, maybe November, and realized I had one closing in, in the pipeline and nothing else coming. Yeah. And it kind of caught me by surprise, but I took it as a challenge to see just how fast you could go from nothing to really get up and doing good stuff. Mm. And so in November, I sat down, I said, all right, well, with the, uh, changes in the market with the interest rates going up and all of that, where do I want to make my mark? And I said, well, let's do, let's do for sale by owner and see if I can get some good momentum going in that. And so I sat down with my, uh, with my local Zillow and I opened up my range to an hour and a half. I had 90 that I could go after immediately for the first 45 days. I went on an appointment a day for 45 days straight, seven days a week. And I picked up uh, over 20 listings in my first 45 days. We're talking November, December last year and really got things moving. And then I've just kept this train running through the year. 
And this year, um, it's looking like I'm going to end the year at almost $9 million, like $8.75 million for the year, which is a pretty decent year for me. And I'm well, looking you're in a small do, market, right? What's the average price? Oh, uh, the average price is three hundred. Uh, three hundred yeah, I mean, that, to three twenty-five. That's like the smallest market. I mean, mm -hmm. there are smaller markets, but that's pretty small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really a country market. Uh, we have so a how, few how many deals is that? Nine million. How many deals is that? That was what? Uh, around thirty-five. Around thirty, thirty-nine, forty deals. Some and of the what deals. What year are is this for you in real estate? Three third year in real estate We're coming into the fourth year. So I got my license in 2020. So this is my yeah. third full year. Wow. Wow. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, well, you know, you just said, okay, I'm going to switch over from circle to for sale by owners, really get this thing going, picked up 20 listings in 45 days, whatever. Um, it seems you make it look easy. And I guess, right. I guess the question is, is it really that easy? And if it is, then what, why do agents not do it? I think agents are afraid to get on the phone. They're afraid of the unknown and they are searching for warm leads. They want people to reach out to them uh, so that they feel more comfortable in these conversations. And really the game changer for me was the moment that I got to the point where I stopped worrying about whether I got a deal or not really didn't matter. All, all I care about when I make these phone calls, and if you watch my YouTube channel, you can see on here the silly stuff that I talk about. All I care about is getting into a fun conversation with somebody and creating a relationship. Because what well, I found I, is, go ahead. Well, a fun conversation, right? I want to, I just want to like unpack that for a second. I mean, oh yeah. Lot, yeah. I mean, a lot of people I don't want to skim over that. I want to actually hear what the hell you're talking about with this, right? Because this is the, this is the magic for me. Because like, I call people when I call people. I'm I'm like, when I hear people being you know kind of negative, have a negative tone towards me when I call them out of the blue mm -hmm. and it's a cold call or whatever, I I literally laugh out loud. Right. Like it it it's funny to me that they would act that way towards me. It's so funny that it makes me kind of giggle for a second and they mm -hmm. hear me laugh. I'm like, hey, listen. Right. And it turns the whole thing around because it just may it just allows it, it it forces them to understand that I don't I'm not I'm not nervous about this. I don't right. have right. zero <laughs> I have zero dog in this fight. I, right. I could care less how this call goes. I'm here exactly. doing community outreach as a volunteer worker, not getting paid. I don't yep. get paid to call you, ma'am. Right. And if you did do a deal with me, I'm not gonna get paid for months and months and months. That's right. right. I'm doing this for free. I'm yeah. just trying to see if there's something I can do to help you. If you don't believe me that that's what my intentions are, then that's laughable to me. Right. right? That's yep. the first thing. And then, and when I do get into a conversation with them, I'm kind of taking it to a play. I'm trying to figure out where I can turn this into a fun conversation myself. So I want to unpack that for a second. Right. Take me through like what you mean by fun conversation. So I'm always listening for them to open the door to talk about something other than real estate. Now I identify myself, like when I'm calling Fizbo's, I've got, I've got, a structure to my calls where my opening is always the same. I want to address a FISBO's primary concern, which is they're selling for sale by owner. I don't need an agent, which is fine. But I want to put voice to that before they get a chance to. So my opening is always the same. Good morning. My name's Shane. I'm a local real estate agent. I see you've got a property for sale by owner on Johnson Street. Is that right? And they'll go, yeah, because how else can they answer it? Right. Mm -hmm. They 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 don't get the opportunity to go, I'm for sale by owner. I don't need you because I'm saying it first. Kind of like when your wife is mad at you. You can okay. let her stay mad at you and then blow up, or you can say, Babe, I see you're mad at me. I know I did something. What was it? Let me fix it. <laughs> Come here. Let me rub your back. It'll make it all better. I promise. And she does just that. She laughs. Right. Same thing with these Fizbos. We put voice to it first so that we're on the same side of the fence as they are. And then my next question typically is something like, once they say, yes, I'm for sale by owner, well, I'll see you're on for a week. How's that going? You having a lot of traction? Here, I'm just trying to see if they're going to chat with me a little bit. If they talk, if they're, if they're, if, if they're talkative or if I'm going to have to transition to the next part of the call really quickly. I'm ready either way. Yeah. But if they start chatting and they, you know, yeah, we've had a few people come out. We've had this, we've had that. And, you know, we had to go out of town 
this is some of the openings I'm looking for. We had to go out of town because my daughter was sick. Oh, is she okay? Right. Um, like get them talking about something other than real estate mm, or, yeah. you know, I had to go to my daughter's wedding. Fantastic. Is that your only kid? Right. Is she staying local? Is she, you know, in another state or something like just get them going down a path that they know I'm calling about real estate. But if we can start talking about other stuff, mm -hmm. like I found a call that I made January 1st, 2023, I was going through my archive. So the beginning of this year, we're at the very end of this year, the first yeah. day of this year, I was calling expireds. And my very first call of the year was to this lady, Peggy, who had an expired. And in the first three minutes of the call, I set the appointment for the next day. And then she opened the door about her grandson, that she's going to get her grandson. So she wasn't sure if the time was going to work, but she would let me know. And I went, grandson, is that your only grandchild? And she goes, oh, no, I have four of them. I said, well, how old is that one? And she said, he's eight. And I'm like, oh, at that age, they're the Energizer Bunny. Does he wear you out when you get them? We went on. I've already set the appointment. The purpose of the call is, is, is over from that aspect. But for me, it's about building the relationship because the better we get at building the relationship, the less objections we're going to get. Relationships eliminate objections because they come from people that Don't aren't sure about you. you. Yeah. Right. And if you can build the relationship, then they don't even come with the objection. So I spent another 20 minutes talking to her about her grandson, about her knee replacement, about, you know, her growing up in that house and raising her kids in that house and just a lot of just really good rapport building and then ended up getting the listing. And it had been an expired that had been on 10 months and couldn't sell. And her complaint with the old agent was that no communication from from him mm. throughout the process. And so I made sure I was Mr. Communication, not that I don't already, but through this process. But she confided in me a week after getting the listing that she was in the doghouse because this friend of hers that she goes to church with, that yeah. she's known for 10 years, was a broker owner right here in our town. And he was a little upset with her that she gave the listing to someone else. She said, but after I spoke with you and then met you, I knew you were the one for me. So it all that listing and it was a great example of it all came down to relationship. Because she would have absolutely gone with her broker that she knew 10 years after failing with this other broker. I don't know why she didn't go with him initially, but I wouldn't have got that listing. It kind of goes along with uh, what I always talk about with people work with people who they like. Absolutely. And if you can just break that barrier of just being their friend outside of real estate. Yeah. And, you know, there's there's a lot of coaches and trainers and brokers that are like, don't be their friend. Um, <sighs> You know, don't be their friend. You're not looking for friends. Blah, Huge blah, mistake. blah. Huh? Huge mistake. I mean, dude, that, that's what I feel like the number one reason people choose agents is because they had a friend in the business that they felt they were buddies with, you yeah. know? I mean, listen, this all I can say is it works for me, you know? Yeah. It works for you, yeah. it seems. Certainly works for me. I made a Mike Tyson reference. I picked up a listing last month, and I attribute it to Iron Mike Tyson. We're, we're, um, we're talking it was one that had expired or they canceled either way. Um, and uh, she's telling me about how the old agent was working with with her and they had a buyer in place and it's an as is property and all of this other stuff. And she goes, yeah, well, you know, we had somebody that came forward that put in an offer through another agent and our agent. We made it really clear with her that we weren't paying for any repairs. It was as is. And so they came with $10,000 worth of repairs and our agent was working doubly hard trying to get us to pay it. And I went, well, that's a problem. I said, you made it clear at the outset it was as is, right? She goes, yeah. I said, well, in a case like this, you need an agent on your side. It's like Mike Tyson and not Mike Tyson when he fought Buster Douglas, but Mike Tyson when he was knocking out people in 20 seconds. That's what you need is that kind of agent. And she goes, all right, you're hired. <laughs> I mean, you have the. I haven't even seen the house stories. yet. You have the craziest stories with the one-liners that people just immediately say, "You're hired." It's done. Yeah, yeah, done deal. So it's a I lot mean, of fun. It's a lot of fun thinking of these silly things that you can say, and this is where not caring 
and just getting into fun conversations. Yeah. Like it, it, it really pulls down their defenses and gets them on your side. It makes, let's say you get one that's a little overpriced, doesn't sell in the time that you have it. And then it's time to renew. I never have any problem with people unless they're just completely done with the process and they want to pull it off the market and keep it. If they want to keep selling it, I have no issue getting renewals, uh, price reductions, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I really give unfiltered and I tell them during the calls, I give unfiltered feedback. Like I don't, I don't sugarcoat anything because that's not going to help us get your property sold. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just works for me just being straight up with them. Did you come up with the Mike Tyson thing on the spot or was that some like material that you'd been working on? On the spot. It's my first time I used it. Damn. And then after as I went, I'm going to have to put that on YouTube because who, who, who references Mike Tyson's on a real estate sales call? So, so this is like a gift of yours. You'd like come up with these one liners. Yeah. On the spot. Yeah, I don't, I don't plan these out usually. Um, but if you hit one that works, happens. you'd probably use it again. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny, man. Um, yeah, I, you know, I've I've had some one liners, none that like got me a listing right then. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, it's just about up. being silly. I was in a listing appointment. Um, a lady, her uh, brother had passed away. And I had reached out. They had it for sale by owner. This is this summer. And um, they were doing an estate sale. So I said, well, hell, I'd love to come meet you guys, see the place. How about I come during your estate sale just to make it convenient? She's like, yeah, sure. That sounds good. So I went by there. I met with them. I'm walking through the living room. I look down. There are some Jordans on the floor that were size 16. And I went, holy crap. How did your brother even fit in this house? <laughs> she 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 felt a piece of laughing she thought that was the funny she was like he had, he had some stuff going on he was a pretty big guy i was like good lord i could row across a river in those things <laughs> right i just say stupid stuff when i'm on these appointments and people like me so it works out yeah no i uh i had a bunch of crazy stories and stuff too um that I mean that that was like the fun of it, man. Was, was yeah dealing with the different personalities and coming up with all the uh, conversations and stuff, and mm -hmm. like getting on their level and you know right. getting to know people and stuff. But you gotta love that kind of stuff, man. Um, you have to, yeah, yeah. Like that's what I think a lot of people are scared of. They're they're in this um, nervous state. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I guess worried about what the other person is going to say or think. I don't know. And then, I mean, like, I don't even like, I had the anxiety of making calls when I first started. So I, I mm -hmm. know what it feels like to like, right here to make calls. Uh, I think everybody was, did you have the anxiety when you, did you ever have the anxiety of making calls? Little, I guess. Um, I was in law enforcement for a number of years and I ran a narcotics unit. So I did a lot of uh, dynamic entries on search warrants and stuff. So I never really got like paralyzed by fear. I see a lot of agents that are crippled by the fear of what someone might say. And the issue I see more than anything else is that they're putting their thoughts into what they're going to encounter. Like they'll see something on a FISBO Zillow ad that says, um, not working with buyer's agents, yeah. you know, buyer's going to have to whatever. And they're like, oh, this person's going to be so militant. This lady that set an appointment for today, the one that I got with Tuesday and then yesterday, yeah, she was so worried that this was going to be one of those militant, you know, yeah. angry Fizbos. And she got on the phone and had a 20 minute fun conversation with mm -hmm. this lady. Mm -hmm. And when it came down to the discussion about you know, buyer agent, you know, compensation, the lady's like, well, we'd like to try not to pay if we can, but I mean, if it's a good off. So she wasn't militant at all. It wasn't right. a bad situation at all. And with her, she gets par like paralyzed to get on the phones. But then as soon as she gets on the phones, mm -hmm. she's fine. She's having fun conversations. And so I think for those that are listening that do have this problem, 
get on the phones and get these conversations going. Kind of yeah. uh, put your fear on check long enough to get on there and see how they are, because you'll find they are a lot more fun than you think they're going to be. And then you do that enough and you just look forward to them. Then it becomes like a drug. Yeah. Um, well, like that example, right? The person that says don't, you know, don't no agents allowed or whatever. Right. right. Those are the easiest ones because they're not getting hounded by agents. Right. <laughs> right. You know, the ones that are getting hounded by agents are the are the ones that have their their, you know, their block uh -huh. up the most. Right. And the ones that say no agents, it's kind of like the uh, the subdivisions that this one agent dominates in. Every, mm -hmm. All the agents are like, not going to go in there. So-and-so sells everything in there. There's no use in, you know, or they'll you get even mad trying. at me. Right, huh? right, right. There's no yeah, use they, in even trying. Yeah, the <laughs> agent will get mad at me if I try to go in there. That's their territory and all this stuff. Those are the easiest <laughs> neighborhoods to hit because there's not a bunch uh -huh. of agents, you know, hitting those mm -hmm. people with mail and phone calls. And there's people in those subdivisions that desperately want another option outside of the one agent that they don't like. There's a bunch of people in there that don't like that one dominant agent. Right. Right. They want another agent, you know, and yep. you come in there, there's not a lot of competition because no, everybody's mm. staying out of it. Right. You know, the, the, the areas like for sale by owners that say no agents and subdivisions that are being dominated that most agents that's like the scariest encounters to think about when in reality those are the easiest uh most opportunistic yep you know opportunities um it's crazy how the mind works it you is know, you put something in your mind and honestly your mind is could be lying to you and, yeah. and the reality could be the complete opposite of all this pressure that you're putting on yourself about this situation could not even the, wherever the pressure is coming for whatever the thing is, that's got you putting pressure on yourself for it could might not even exist. That's like, um, like an agent today, I was, I was on a coaching call today and the agent said that they just uh, spent a lot of money on this website. I want to say it was like why Lopo or, like okay one of these websites right and mm -hmm. like they're basically putting money into pay-per-click for google google leads right right and like we all know that's mostly buyers and it's mostly horrible leads you're spending a lot of money i was like dude shut that down right now bro number right. one like shut that down that's that's the worst thing you can do yeah and you know i'm like red x and i'm like call expires for sell by owner circle prospecting He's like, yeah, you know, I just, I don't know why I'm so, you know, scared about those calls. And I was like, bro, it's I was the same like, call. <laughs> I said, dude, I said, I said, I've heard all this before. I said, here's what you do. I said, you, you call the expires for sub owner circle prospecting leads. And I said, mm -hmm. pretend like they're a play, pay per click Google, yes. Google lead that you got. That's and right. he was like, he, he said when he calls Google pay per click leads, he's like, hi, because he thinks that they want his call. They're wanting him to call them, right? So he calls mm -hmm. with this like really high enthusiastic tone and mm -hmm. it ends up being a great call. But he said most of the time, they don't even know who the hell he is. <laughs> I said, you're literally cold calling people. Uh -huh. You're spending all this money to cold call buyers when you could be cold calling sellers for literally a penny a piece or less. Mm -hmm. And if you just pretend like they're pay-per-click, I said, you would crush it, bro. Right. You know, I was like, you would crush it. I said, you know, expires are great because like they try to just sell for sell by owners are trying to sell. They don't have an agent. And I was like, take take circle prospecting. I said, have a buyer and like filter out the uh, the absentee yeah. owners mm -hmm. of properties they might buy. I said, call people who aren't living in the home that you're calling about and see if the seller who lives in a different home, this is an investment. This is a rental property. This is a second home. This is whatever. Mm -hmm. See if he wants to sell his additional property since prices are so high to your buyer. That's right. Call on situations and stir the pot. I said, but think of yourself as a volunteer worker, right? How much money does volunteer worker make? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Volunteer. They're nothing. working for free. <laughs> That's right. So I said, I said, be a volunteer worker. Do uh -huh. a community outreach to see what you can do to help people, man. I said, and just pretend like they're pay-per-click if that's what you got to tell yourself. It's your brain lying to you 
about yep. the situation. I don't know for what. It must be the right. crocodile brain. We all have the crocodile brain, the, mm -hmm. the fight or flight, you know, yeah. uh, uh, mechanisms from our ancient ancestors. You know, we used to run, you know, run away from bears and stuff. Right. It's just like our mechanism to like try to protect us. And it's your brain literally lying to you about what could possibly happen when 95% of the stuff you're worried about never happens. And the 5% that does, you can deal with it when it happens. So the great philosopher, worry about 100 of nothing. Yeah. The great philosopher Epictetus said that we create more hardships in our mind than reality ever will. Oh, God. I mean, I mean amen. yeah. And that's 2000 years ago. <laughs> All your problems are yeah. literally pretend. Yeah. No question. Like, no question. like literally like even. OK, even on like repair addendums, let's just say, for an example. Right. Mm -hmm. Somebody like agents get stuff under contract. They get a property under contract. Okay. They were worried about the whole thing up to where it got under contract, right? If they're going to do mm -hmm. it, how the negotiation is going to go. They were worried to death about even getting there. Once it's there, now they're on to the next worry thing, which is the repair addendum. Are they going to get pre-approved? Is the financing going to go through? Here comes the repair yep. addendum. Here comes the repair addendum. And it's, you know, the buyers want 5,000 off, you know? You send it to the seller's agent and they say, great, we'll do it. 5,000 off. Boom. You got it. We see the repairs and we're going to have to do the repairs if, if you don't buy it. So bada bang, bada boom, done deal. All that worrying For nothing. and all those problems in your head literally did not exist. And if they did exist, if there did become a problem during the inspection, repair, denim negotiations, mm -hmm. they weren't, they didn't exist yet. And if they did exist, they'll exist later. You could deal with it then. You know? Dude, three years ago, you and I had the same conversation. I had a $450,000 listing. I was worried because it was overpriced 50 K. I called you up. I said, they're stuck on the price. We're like, like they want to sell it for 450 and they're not going to deal with anything else. And you said, okay, what's the problem? I said, what happens when the appraisal comes in low? You said, worry about that then. Like the exact same thing you're saying now, well, just worry about that when it happens, if it happens, don't worry about it now. And the appraisal came in 15,000 low and my people bent to the appraisal. It was nothing to even worry about. It still yeah. went through like, like butter, you know, it's, what, it's, no like I tell, it's like I tell people, if you got a buyer and you got a seller, right. And they want mm -hmm. to do this deal. The seller wants to sell. The buyer wants to buy. It's going to happen. Yeah. All this little thousand bucks here, 10,000 there, 5,000 there repairs, uh, uh, appraisals, financing and uh ex extension on the closing all that stuff doesn't matter it's gonna happen that's why yeah. i say like once you get it under a contract you pretty much close your eyes and go to sleep honestly yeah. i mean you don't do that but you you watch it you know you put out little fires if you need to you check on people you keep them updated you let them know what's going on if you have yep. to step in and do some heavy lifting awesome whatever but at the end of the day in terms of like your mental health let's just say Right. The deal is either going to happen or it's not hit. Like the future has already played itself out. Yeah. In my mind, like the future is done, honestly. Like that's how right. I live. Like it's done. And like we're just so now in the present, since the future is done and I've already basically put that deal in motion, I need to go get other deals in motion so that's that the it. future can play out with a bunch of closings rather right. than focus, you know, worrying about this one that's already done. That's what people do. They worry about the deal that's already done, that's already headed to closing. They right. worry about that instead of spending time trying to get more deals going. Mm -hmm. And that's why they only do one deal at a time or three deals at a time or two deals at a time. Instead of having like 10 to 15 deals at a time, dude, I always had 10 to 20 deals under contract. Yeah. There, at, there, at one point I had 39, The high, at my very, the highest point I had 39 deals under contract at one time. It was like 2017, I think. There was one time I had 39 pending deals. Right. I had this whiteboard and it was just like, <laughs> bye, 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 bye. And I was like, but I was counting them and I was like 39. I was like, damn, let me get one more. Let me make it an even 40. You know, right. it didn't happen. Cause of course, when you got that many, like things are closing every day. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I always stayed between 10 and 20. That was my happy place. Well, and that's the thing that was so cool about this last year is that it was like an experiment to see how I could go from nothing, which I literally let my pipeline dry up to nothing, to then having an almost $9 million year. 
which when did it drop to nothing? You talking about last year? November last year, November yeah. twenty two. Yeah. yeah, yeah, was my last deal, and then I was in January before I closed anything. And why do you think that it uh, dried up? Oh, because I was on that construction project and I stopped prospecting. Got you. Got like you. just completely shut down, and then were I you, were you kind of um were you kind of like. Did you do it on? Did did were you in a place where you just thought you didn't have to prospect and business would kind of keep rolling, or did you do it on purpose? Like, did you know? I didn't do it on purpose. That's for sure. Um, I got tied up. We took the roof off of our house and built a second floor on it, and I did all the work myself. So it was a lot of labor intensive stuff, and it was time critical because every time it would rain, you know, we would be stuck with an uncovered house that you know, we have issues. So I was trying to get it done as fast as possible. So it wasn't where I did it on purpose. I did maybe have the idea that things would continue on because when I did kind of lay off prospecting, I had uh, 15, 16 listings. I had a few of those under contract. Things were happening. So I was like, well, I've still got money coming in. I can pick it back up. And then I got, I guess I fell asleep a little bit because by the time I realized holy crap, I'm down to my last closing. I've got nothing else coming, nothing else in the pipeline. I said, all right, well, it's time to time to go to work. And then I went on an appointment a day for 45 days. You know, I started getting on here, setting these FISBO appointments. And um, I held initiatives. Like a shitload of for sale by owners in your area. I had 90 at the time. Damn. That I could work through. Now, some of them had been on Zillow for two years, like yeah, the unsellable or the unreasonable or whatever. Um, I think right now I've got 35 or 40 on how far, uh, how far out Zillow. do you go? Hour and a half in any direction. Okay. Right. I I really set my range out. I wanted as big a pool that I could work from, but I set my range out to uncomfortable levels. It's still okay. within my MLS. So I'm not yeah, you know, so playing in somebody 70- else's backyard. So there's 73 right now on my market on Zillow. So it's about the there same. There you go. Yeah. And like, yeah, I mean, it's it's up to an hour out. So. Right. So it's about the same. But I sat down on day one and I booked out four days worth of appointments. And then when I would get up the next day, I would book out the fourth day out and then go on that appointment that day. And when I'd get up the next day, I'd book the fourth day out. So I didn't sit down and book out 45 days worth of appointments. That would have been retarded. Mm, but I sat yeah, down sure. and booked out four, you yeah. know, called until I got four of them booked and then just kept maintaining that fourth day out Yeah, and uh, worked my way through the entire list. Once I got through the list, then I started adding in the expireds and canceds and, you know, my follow-up game and all that. And uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I've had, I've had a lot of success with it. Hell, I had an agent come in my Zoom room from Scotland, from Glasgow, Scotland, mm. And she said she'd been seeing my YouTube channel and she wished that she could do FISBOs. And I said, well, why can't you? And she goes, well, that's not a thing that we do here in Scotland. And I'm, well, but why not? And she goes, we don't have any way, like y'all have Radex and Zillow and all that. We don't have any way to track it. And I said, okay, so if you were going to put your home for sale by owner, what would you do? I said, would you put it on marketplace or would you like, where would you advertise it? She goes, well, on our personal Facebook page. Okay. And then we put a sign in the yard. I said, okay, there you go. I said, you're in the capital of Scotland, right? She goes, yeah. I said, um, we have pizza delivery. Do you have food delivery of some sort? She goes, yeah, Uber Eats. And I went, okay, great. So how often do you get Uber Eats? And she kind of laughed. She goes, four, five days a week, because I don't I like feeding my going. family. <laughs> and I was like, I perfect. I said, right. I said, let's do this. I said, um, we'll work on the strategy to go after FISBOs. But next time your Uber Eats guy comes by, give him your business card and tell him you'll give him five pounds for every FISBO sign that he sees. He can take a photo of it. It has to be legible. You got to be able to read the phone number on it. Mm-hmm. Take a picture of the sign and a picture of the front of the house and send it to you and tell him you'll give him five pounds for each one of those that he sends over. She was like, that's brilliant. And I said, now, additionally, do you have a contractor that you use regularly? She goes, yeah. I said, do the same thing with him. Not necessarily that you're going to give him five pounds because you're already giving him work every, you know, every time you get a deal 
and it needs work, you give him a job, right? She goes, yeah. I said, well, ask him for a favor. Ask him to snap photos while he's on other jobs of any for sale by owner signs he sees. Mm -hmm. Within the first four weeks, she picked up two FISBO listings. And we're talking someone who had never heard of anybody in the entire country doing FISBOs before. We can do the same thing here. If you're in one of those markets where like, ah, there's not a lot of FISBOs. Well, how long have you been an agent? Do you have relationships with your contractors? Have your contractors snap signs of those FISBO signs stuck in the front yard? Guess what? If that's all they did, they aren't getting any phone calls. You want to talk about the easiest leads in the world. If all they did was put a sign in their front yard and they're hoping that's what does it and they're not technological enough to put it on Zillow or put it out there for the world to see, no agents are even calling them. So we can do the same thing right here. I also tell agents when you're out driving, you go to the grocery store. If you pass a house where the grass is tall, right? And it, it's obviously not lived in currently, but it looks like a decent sellable house. Write the address down. When you get back home, go on the tax records, pull the name, plug it into Red X, plug it into wherever so that you can get a phone number and call them. Hey, I see your property sitting vacant over here. Is there any way I can help you? Are you you know, planning on renting it out? Are you looking for a renter? Are you thinking maybe selling it in the future? Like you can be lead generating everywhere you go. You don't have to just sit down and, and you know, do it in front of the computer. You can, but literally everywhere I go, I'm lead genning. Yeah. It's amazing. Cause like you, you go out there and find a way, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And those are fun conversations. I called one, I was taking my wife to lunch and I called one and it was a lady was on the tax card and it went to her voicemail and it was obviously her. And I almost left it at that, but I went to the second number and I call it and this guy answers. And I said, yeah, I'm looking for Harriet. And he goes, well, this is William, her son. Can I help you? And I said, yeah, I was taking my wife to lunch over in Murfreesboro. Again, we're going to make this personal. Like we're just two guys talking. I said, and I passed this house over here, brick house in your mom's name, but it doesn't look like anybody's living in there. I just wanted to reach out and see what was going on with that. Kind of like your expired script. What in the world's going on with that, right? And he goes, well, my mom passed away a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, oh, I'm mm -hmm. sorry to hear that. I said, yeah. this isn't, I said, I didn't know. He said, no, 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 there's no way you could have known. I'm not, I'm not mad about that. I was like, all right. I said, well, I still feel bad. He goes, no, nah, I don't. He said, I need a real estate agent because once we get through the stuff with my mom's funeral and all, I'm going to need to sell this. I was like, all right, well, let me grab an email from you. I'll send you over my resume. And then when you're ready, you can just reach back out to me. So like, like you never know what you're going to come across with these things, but most of the calls I make are fun. I'll make one or two calls a day and set one or two appointments pretty consistently mm -hmm. uh, doing these things. So it, it's just, it's easy and it's fun. Yeah, dude. Um, I was just looking like I was just looking at this um some of these text messages because I just sent out this text. Mm hmm And I was like, Oh, do you get my text messages? I do, I think. Yeah. I, I should said get as your we text close messages. out the last work day of the year, I wanted to say how proud I am of how you handled two thousand twenty three and that and that two thousand twenty four is gonna be the best year of your life. Keep pushing. Did you see that? Yes, yes, I did okay. see that. So like, I was just looking at a couple of these responses. This person is John Scotty in Gainesville. He said he's 26 years old. He says, made 200,000 in my second year, second full nice. year in real estate with you as my coach. Isn't that nice? Yeah. That's solid. Uh, huh? I said, that's solid. Crazy. So, and then this guy. He said, uh, Ricky, I don't know if you see these texts, but thank you for everything you do. This is Hunter Donnelly. He's 25 in Erring, Pennsylvania. These are 25 and 26-year-olds. Yeah. I uh, don't know if you'll see this. Thank you for everything you do. Because of the info you give out for free, I grossed 102000 in commissions this year after my broker split. I'm 25. I sell in Pittsburgh. So not a crazy market like L.A. or New York. This is more money than anyone, almost anyone I went to high school with is making and is allowing me to buy my first house in 2024. You're the man. Um, wow. Yeah, like this is just like a couple of text messages I'm just looking at. I think you probably saw that message the other day. This guy uh, did $1.7 in commissions last mm -hmm. year. 
Mm-hmm. I did see that. He said he started following me in 2018 when he got his license. And he's been doing the weekly email, the calls, and everything. He did 1.7 million in commissions. Crazy. Last year, he's in Canada. Um, just mm. like it's un, it's just, dude, it's too much, man, for me. Like, <laughs> it's a lot, man. It's too to much like, to comprehend. Yeah, it is. I can't even fathom the amount of uh, people that we've helped. Um, right. You know. But anyway, I'm going to have you come in and do a session on for sale by owners uh, on the uh, okay. on the gold bar and the coaching platform. Okay, the Guys listening, if you're not on the gold bar, the new gold bar platform, just go to zero to diamond dot com, create an account. Uh, there's a bronze membership that's free. There's a silver membership that's ninety nine a month. The ninety nine a month, we do a weekly call. We do monthly wit listing challenges. We have a leaderboard. You get all the replays of all the past coaching calls. We do a vacation invite every year. We can hang out in uh, Mexico or wherever we go this year. And uh, we're building a really, um, just a real incredible community of agents. We're already up to like 400. We have 5,000 agents on the platform. We just hit that today. And we've got three to 400 that are pay actually silver members that are um, participating. And it's just, we're just going to continue to grow that. But I'm going to have you come in, man, and actually go through your entire for sale by owner scripts and strategy and answer questions and everything for the silver members this month in January. Sounds good. Uh, so I'll, I'll let you know about that. Cause I, I want these people to hear this man, uh, get, get all these strategies from you and all that stuff. And again, I'm going to link your YouTube video in the description so people can go and watch all the videos that you actually talking to prospects. If you guys haven't seen that, that's that is, silly. Uh, that's a hoot. <laughs> it's silly. I mean, <laughs> it is dollar, right. Man. You guys I'm in here it. prank calling people, making money. <laughs> That's it. That's it. You say prank call? I'm in here prank calling people, making That's money. That's what right? it is. I say silly stuff. I used to say that all the time. Like I, I'm a professional pranker. Like yeah. I, I go and I, I prank call people all day long. Yep. And, uh, and help them buy and sell real estate. <laughs> yeah. That's, That's it. That's Bro, right. I appreciate you, man. Thanks for coming on. All right, we brother. need to do this at least once or twice or three times a month <laughs> man, <laughs> let's do it here. man i'm up for it i'll have more stories because i'm on the phone every day cool man be good man all right brother see you, see you bro.